All right, good evening and welcome to KTN Live Wire. So tonight we'll try and have a marathon of interviews. First, first off, we'd like to have a discussion with the Kamkunzi Member of Parliament, Yusuf Hassan, who's just back uh, from treatment, from a long treatment that has taken months. But also, later we'll be talking to Wilson Sosion, the NAT chairman, and we'll be talking about priorities of this government, what he feels and where the education matters have been placed by this government. But first, let's set the stage for our conversation tonight. Shortly after 8 p.m. on Friday, an explosive was hurled into a mosque. It would explode, injuring at least 15 people, among them come Kunji Member of Parliament Yusuf Hassan. Three people died on Friday, while two more succumbed to their injuries on Saturday, bringing the death toll to five. At least six others are recuperating in hospital. <laughs> kama grenade haina kama hiyo kitu ile inaribuka hapo kwa hapo inarushwa na inaribuka si kama zile zingine inawekwa kisha mtu anaenda kulipua akiwa maybe akiwa mbali kidogo Shortly after the blast, riots broke out as rowdy youth roamed the streets, seeking to flash out those they claimed were behind the attacks. Hatutaki vita, hatutaki, hatutaki tugombane na majirani zetu, hatutaki tukosane na watu, tutaka amani. Walofanya KDF yende kule Somalia hawako isili. Mpahali wako inajulikana. The youth engaged the police in running battles and lit fires in street corners. The police responded by firing tear gas canisters, eventually managing to disperse the crowds. But long after the protesters had retired, police officers patrol the streets of Isili. The incident comes just days after a blast occurred in Isili's Joska area, killing one person and injuring seven others. Only a month ago, an improvised explosive device went off in a bus, killing 10 passengers. All right, in the studio with me is Mr. Yusuf Hassan, who is the Kamkunz Member of Parliament, in his first television interview after seven months of treatment and after seven months of that terrible incident back in Kamkunzi. Karibu sana. Asante, James. But uh, unfortunately, we are meeting under these circumstances. The last time we met, we had cordial conversation. We were talking about future that had great promise, but we're here now. Yes, indeed. And uh, since then, of course, there has been some uh, uh, dramatic change in my life. Uh, one day I was uh, all right, uh, moving around my constituency, serving the people who elected me. Uh, the next day I was. Um, uh, on bed in a hospital in a very serious condition with multiple uh, serious injuries uh, and it has taken me this long to be able to come back uh, to uh, what I can consider a normal uh, life after that. Uh, you, you, you say it's normal but you are now practically on a wheelchair it's not very normal but six people died that night uh, many others were injured where does this place the fight that is terrorism and your drive for the people and the politics that you engage in? Well, first of all, I abhor all uh, means uh, and all methods uh, of using violence as a way of achieving one's objective. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, this was a, a despicable, uh, cowardly act on unarmed uh, innocent civilians uh, who are just coming out of uh, prayers and a meeting uh, in their community uh, six of the dead uh, two of them were children under the age of 10 or 11 so this was a, a, a terrible uh, and horrific uh, attack uh, that uh, is completely unacceptable uh, in any society and um, I, I condemned it and I feel um, we, we should condemn people who use these methods uh, of uh, terrorism to kill or maim others. But certainly it hasn't stopped me uh, from moving on uh, with my political objectives, uh, to continue to be a member of parliament, to make a difference uh, in the lives of the people of Kamkunji as uh, they have re-elected me. 
And one of the things I found out to when I was down, uh, when the attack took place, and I realized that I was conscious and uh, I was going to survive, is that I would never allow these cowardly attackers uh, to win the day. Uh, and I was determined to get up once again, to continue the work that I was doing, to campaign against people like them, uh, to work for a different society where we can coexist as a community across religious and ethnic lines as Kenyans, as Africans, and take the necessary actions to deal with the socio-economic problems, poverty and social justice that create conditions uh, for young people to want to use violence as a method of uh, expressing their grievances or their political goals and to create a, a, a better and a different society that would def defeat elements like that uh, and a better society in which we can all be proud of. Did, did you think for a moment when this attack took place and you looked at the injuries you sustained, did you think for a moment that it's not worth it? That it's, you, you, you can't go through this just for politics? Absolutely not, because I saw the injuries. In fact, uh, um, uh, my f uh, right foot was almost hanging uh, on my uh, limbs. And uh, for a moment, uh, I thought that I was going to uh, uh, lose it. Uh, I could see the bones because uh, the bomb that was used was a cruel weapon, uh, inhumane in some ways, because it tears apart your muscles. It uh, destroys your tendons and then it shatters your bones. So it, it has a, a multiple uh, effects on yourself. But psychologically, at no moment did I feel that it was not worth the effort. I felt that uh, I had to live my life uh, with the help of uh, Almighty God. Uh, I knew uh, that hope and faith would carry me through it. And at no moment did I ever lose hope that in fact, uh, my legs, my limbs were going to be saved, that I was going to be back again on my feet, and I'll continue to contribute uh, the role uh, that um, my destiny was to serve and continue to serve the people uh, that elected me. But Yusuf, just two weeks ago, there was a grenade attack um, in areas around Isili, and these attacks keep on happening uh, as random as they come in different places uh, as you'd like. Do you feel scared by these many attacks as someone who uh, you would say, you know, s you know in, in some sense, you know, your destiny now is tied to, you know, this kind of uh, acts? No, I think fear is not an issue that um, uh, takes a lot of my time. I fear for the victims, yes. Uh, I know that um, the victims would suffer uh, pain, um, they would suffer uh, a lot of wasted time. Uh, I know that some people would lose the love, their loved ones um, because some of these people are fathers, they are mothers, uh, they are sisters, they have children. Uh, for example, uh, more than 30 people were injured in this incident and some of them have been amputated. Uh, for example, there were school children. There's a guy who's just finished his uh, secondary school at the Slee High School. Uh, both his legs were shattered. He's now on a wheelchair. He's a young man of 18 or 19 years old. So I fear uh, for the victims. Uh, I fear uh, for the survivors and their families. But we should never allow fear uh, to overcome us in a such a way that we surrender uh, to mad people, to people who are uh, deranged, who use uh, violence as a method to express their uh, anger and grievances against innocent people. That I, I'm completely opposed to it. I would campaign against it and fight against it all my life. And uh, we would work for a society which would uh, not tolerate that kind of violence. But my main regret actually since this incident and many of the uh, bomb attacks that have taken place in uh, my constituency and other parts of Nairobi is the failure to uh, uh, provide uh, answers to uh, the causes of them and uh, the fact that not a single person uh, from any of this incident has been arrested uh, and brought to book. Does that bother you? Yes. That yes, indeed. In that incident that six people died, yourself injured because your life probably changed by this and many others, that not even a single suspect 
is in custody. It bothers me a lot because I feel that these uh, murderers, these killers, are walking freely somewhere uh, in Kenya or elsewhere uh, and are more likely to repeat their acts uh, in other places in our country against other innocent people uh, here or elsewhere. And therefore, one of the things I, I hope uh, that the new administration, the new government would put into, a, into place, the new police, uh, Inspector General of Police would put into place, the, is to ensure that we, uh, we have uh, uh, an effective investigation system uh, that can prevent uh, this kind of things uh, to happen, but not only prevent, but also when they happen, uh, to apprehend and bring the culprits the perpetrators of this heinous act to, to, to a court of law, to, to justice. How, how do we uh, finish, how do we deal with these mad people or derangement people as you uh, refer to them? How do we deal with this? Because it's a problem that is ever present. I would say that um, both crime and terrorism require a more holistic, a more uh, robust approach to deal with uh, not only uh, uh, the symptoms but also the causes is that we should deal with our communities, those who are involved in those activities, uh, to make sure that uh, they are on board, uh, that we win hearts and minds, so that the communities themselves police, uh, police themselves. Because without the support, uh, without the eyes and ears of our communities, be it in Mandera or in Garissa or in Nairobi or in Kakamega or in Bugoma, we are not going to be able to deal with uh, the enemies within that are causing uh, havoc and damage. Uh, to innocent civilians and to property. The second element, of course, is to have, a, now that we have a devol uh, devolution, a devolved government, is to spread development, socioeconomic development, across the country so that we do not have two Kenya, the Kenya that we know and the other Kenya, which is um, economically uh, deprived, uh, which is marginalized, the peripheries like Turkana, northern Kenya in particular, this area should be brought into development and in line uh, with other parts of Kenya in terms of uh, uh, socioeconomic improvement, education, health, and so on. And together, I think, with this uh, uh, inducements and uh, uh, implementation of a better uh, development program, we can deal more effectively uh, with those who continue to be uh, uh, dissenting using violence and other means. I must ask you this though. Mm. Do you feel you're energetic enough? Do you still you still have, you know, the talent that you have? You have the same spirit, the same drive, the same passion to serve the people of Kamkunji? Absolutely. In fact, uh, I'm more determined, I'm more energized uh, to be able to do um, what I was doing. Uh, we have a five-year strategic plan for the constituency's development. I would work with the stakeholders, uh, including the governor, uh, the government, uh, other departments of government, to ensure that uh, we uplift uh, Kamkunji from the level of underdevelopment in, in some parts of it, to a developed uh, neighborhood uh, that plays an active role in the economic uh, well-being uh, and peace and the prosperity of this country. All right. And, and Italy is in your right in the middle of your docket constituency, if you like, and a lot of issues, you know, talk about transportation issues, uh, talk about the issues to do with security, uh, traders are looking for more space and opportunities. It's a whole space that doesn't look very organized at this particular point. In your politics, where does Isili fall into? Isili is a, a major pillar uh, in uh, the economic uh, structure that uh, makes Kamkunji. The other one is Kikomba. Uh, these are two major economic hubs uh, that are contributing enormously to the economic uh, development and uh, the trade in our capital city. As you say, the situation in Kamkunji, in general, Isli and in, in uh, Kikomba, if you look, is chaotic. The infrastructure is, uh, has collapsed. Um, Business is uh, done in a very messy and, and disorganized way. We're trying to change all of that. You can see now, uh, in my first two years as a member of parliament, we have put into place uh, a road and infrastructure, uh, which is uh, in the process of construction. For example, Second Avenue is already done. Um, 
General Waruinge is under construction at the moment as a major uh, road into and out of the uh, Isli. Um, we are also doing um, electrification and lighting in the, uh, in, the, in the neighborhood. More roads are going to be built. We are working on the, uh, the uh, security and uh, garbage collection in uh, partnership with other stakeholders like the government of Nairobi. And so I envision that in the next few years, you're going to see uh, a better uh, Isli, a better Kikomba, and I bet, uh, James, maybe uh, in those two next two years, uh, you will be spending a lot of time uh, buying things or selling things or coming to the wonderful restaurants, uh, in Italy. different cuisines that you can get in Italy. So it's going to be a much better uh, place than it is right now. Uh, now. I, and, and the process is already in place. So we hold you to that promise. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Your final thoughts? <laughs> well, I um, think the challenges are enormous. I think uh, uh, you... Rome was not built in a day. A lot of people are, uh, are, are not uh, ready to accept that uh, road construction is a process, development is a process. But I want to tell them to, um, to be patient, to work together with the um, local authorities and the member of parliament to ensure that we have a, a different place that is. Uh, than what we have at the moment. All right. Yusuf Hassan, thank you very much. You've done well. I appreciate you for making time to talk to us. And thank you. Uh, yeah, it after was really a, a great pleasure to be on your program. Thank you very much. And we do hope that you get well very soon. Back up on your feet so, that, so that you can work for the people. Asante, sir. All right. We're talking to Yusuf Hassan, Member of Parliament of Kamkunzi. And yes, you've had him. You've had his passion. You've had his politics. Now we hold him to account. And we wish him all the best.